This video comes with a whole lab environment that you can practice in and follow along with me. It includes an entire Active Directory domain, fully guided material and a walkthrough with interactive questions, and virtual machines that you can spin up and control right from your browser. We'll chat about it more as we get into the video. NetExec is a tool for assisting in network service exploitation. It has tons of different modules for exploiting different kinds of network protocols, like RPC, Remote Procedure Call, SMB, Server Message Block, and tons of others like LDAP, WMI, SSH, and even FTP. You can find it online on GitHub and the documentation where I am right now at netexec.wiki. When NetExec was first released, there was a little bit of chatter on how it came to life, because if you take a look at the screenshots, if you get to see the tool, it looks quite a bit like Crack Map Exec, another awesome, incredible penetration testing tool for a lot of this network service exploitation. And look, we gotta say, credit where credit is due, they allude to this just as well. This tool is based on Crack Map Exec and was originally created by ByteBleeder and maintained by MPGN, some of the folks over at Porchetta Industries. But look, hey, with this new iteration, this new direction for a completely free and open source tool with NetExec, we have this here. Look, Look, I don't want to drill down, I know it can be a can of worms in that conversation, but I think this is a pretty cool showcase of how we might dive into using NetExec for penetration testing. It has support for a lot of common protocols and oftentimes with the use case of trying different credentials. Hey, username and password pairs, but you can do so much more with it, and that is what I wanted to drill down into in this video. You could be using Kerberos in the mix, or different modules, a database hooked up, Bloodhound integration, or scanning for vulnerabilities with SMB. That's server message block capability. Host enumeration is an awesome thing. We can drill down into a ton of this. Password spraying, credential dumping, Kerberos and command execution, looking at network shares, defeating laps, the local admin password solution, and so, so much more awesome and incredible stuff. But look, we can go ahead and get started with it by installing NetExec and kicking the tires, trying to see this thing in action. I will go ahead and install on Unix or Linux. I'm running Kali Linux for my virtual machine here, and they recommend using using pipx that allows you to install netx and the nxc command line and database all system wide. So I could just simply copy and paste this and slap that into my terminal. Here, let me log into Kali. I am updated on the 2024.1 version as you should be just as well. I'll move into the op directory and hey, I would go ahead and create a directory for netexec or all those that I might wanna use for my own tooling. And I could go ahead and just slap in all this syntax and we'll go ahead and install it. Enter my password here and cruise through and do what we need to do to get it up and running. Once that is staged, set up and in your path, no matter where you are, even if you're in your local directory, you should be able to run NXC or NetExec. You can see my prompt kind of changing colors here and I could just invoke it and get started with the tool. Of course, it requires some arguments and parameters, so gives us the usage info, but take a look at that banner. Oh man, it's so cool, super slick. Hey, John from the future here, and I'm just jumping in to tell you about this because I for one am really excited about it, and I hope that you think it's pretty cool too. This whole lab and all the material is available to you, and you can follow along with me, all with the link below, as Name Your Price Training. If you check it out, you can dive into the exercise and literally type in whatever price point you want. If you want, you can get the material and the interactive questions for free, literally zero dollars, you can have it. But you do need to pay for the virtual machine lab time because those are cloud instances. The VMs are all set up for the whole environment and you can adjust the number of credit hours to make this whole thing less than a dollar. And if you'd like to support me as the creator on the initial enrollment, understanding how much time goes into creating the lab environment and material, offering all this education for free, the option is there. With that, you can spin up the lab machines in a whole Active Directory environment and get into a Kali Linux instance all with just a few clicks. So hey, if you want, if you want to follow along, I'm really proud of this Name Your Price training, and you can dive in with the link below, gh.live slash nypt. And P.S. If you're following along in the Name Your Price training, the video walkthrough and the labs there might be a little bit different. I had recorded this video and done the demo when we first created the environment within Snap Labs, and there might be a couple differences in the steps that I take, but it should really be all the same. This is our NetExec lab that, hey, my good friend M Alpha put together. So big shout out, big thanks, huge kudos and credit where credit is due. I super appreciate him. Hey, helping streamline 
I didn't prep this video demonstration here, but let's go ahead and launch this new range for cruising along with NetExec. All right, the lab is launched and we have all of these machines running. I can go ahead and access this if I dig into the VPN setup and I create a new config. I'll build out one with the attacker access for Linux and I'll just say, hey, NetExec lab. We'll go ahead and create that. Should be built out. Now I could just simply download that. All right, I brought in the OpenVPN file into my virtual machine. I can go ahead and connect to it. I will slap a sudo on that so that I can get things moving for us. And there we go, initialization sequence complete we're looking good. Let me open up another terminal and I'll just want to check out my IP address for my ton zero address here. I am 10.9.254.6. Now, thanks to this lab, we have a whole active directory environment that we can beat up, break into and do some penetration testing. But hey, before we do, look, I gotta say, I'm trying my best to get out videos like these all the time, frequently as I can, to share some of that free cybersecurity education. So it's free for you, but the only only way I can really do that is thanks to the help of some sponsorship. So if I may, I'd love to tell you about N8N. It's workflow automation for technical professionals. When you want to tie together different APIs and you know when you need to slap some code in the mix, like Python or JavaScript, all with flexibility and scale. You can build complex automations 10 times faster and connect practically any application. Think Gmail, Slack, QuickBooks, Airtable, anything. And one incredible use case is for cybersecurity or DevOps. You can mix in GitHub, VirusTotal, URL scan, even MySQL or Postgres databases, anything you want, or even just incorporate raw HTTP requests to get whatever data you need. I use N8N personally for a homegrown threat intelligence feed and the flexibility and configuration is awesome. The full source code is available and an N8N instance can be completely self-hosted, so you can even automate file system events or operations on your server. Seriously, if you are a technical practitioner, give N8N a try and get creative with all the things you can automate. Build workflows and focus on KPIs, not APIs, and save time every single day. You can get started automating today in a free trial of N8N with my link in the video description, jh.live slash N8N. Huge thanks to N8N for sponsoring this video. All right, now back on the command line, and let me say, hey, this lab environment does have Windows Defender or the built-in antivirus disabled and turned off just so we can focus on the demonstration and education of using NetExec. We're not gonna deal with, oh, AV bypasses or evasion or whatever, and it might not be the most realistic lab environment, but again, seriously, I just wanna demo the tool here for you. So let's start with doing some SMB enumeration, trying to find some of the hosts in the environment, and I know that I am in the the subnet 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Let me see if I can get any hits with this. Okay, yeah, we see a whole lot coming through. Let me zoom out, I'll scroll just a bit, and look, it's firing up against these different hosts here, and we can see ADCS01, DC01, FS01, and all these others. I'll run that one more time so we can get a little bit better visual, but you can see the IP address presented here in each of these hosts, and that will clue us in as to what these targets are that we could go beat up. All Windows hosts, bear in mind, that's why that 445 might just be readily open, and SMB signing could be on or off. I'm gonna store all these IP addresses in just a little host Dot text file for my own convenience here. Now we know there are a handful of hosts in this environment, but the best thing about NetExec is that we can start to work with these in mass. Like we just super easily got to enumerate all of those hosts with a simple SMB, but maybe we could see if there are any shares available just doing the exact same thing, maybe saying, oh, you know what? Let me supply a username with tack U and attack P also just as well to provide a password, but these are no username or password provided. I'm just using the single quotes here as an empty string to say, look, I wanna look for a null session and can I check out the shares with tac tac shares? Let me try and run this and let's see what we might be able to dig up. Ooh, okay, found a couple shares. Uh, well, none yet. Access denied in some cases, but will we get any other hits? Nope, nothing yet. Well, okay, still good to do for our workflow, still necessary for our penetration test. But now let's try the exact same thing with maybe a anonymous user, like a guest account or whatever, so we could supply a username, just simply being guest. Will that get any hits? 
running it across all of these hosts, everything in the range here. And ooh, we do see some hits. Look at this. I'll zoom out just a smidge here because you can see now this everyone share is available alongside this secret share. It says, hey, this share, <laughs> this share stores secrets. No peeking. Oh, I like that. And that's all on this FS01, presumably the file server. Now, naturally, you might go and use SMB client or SMB map or whatever, try to interact with it. But look, we could use NetExec to do exactly what we would want. Super easy. We can supply the IP address of the file server. That's 10.10.10. .10 20 in this case, and we'll supply that username and credentials that we saw just previously working for us, a guest session. And then we can use one of those modules with tech capital M, and we'll use this spider underscore plus capability, because that will allow us to spider, pull out, look through all the things present on the share. So I'll pass in another argument, uh, tack O to supply an option here. And I'll say download underscore flag equals true. If we were to actually take a look at the documentation in the using modules section, they mentioned exactly the same syntax, tack capital M, and we could dig into a couple of the other modules. Spidering shares is exactly what we're digging into. You could supply tack tack spider or just pass it in as we did with the modules. And then if you wanted to download the files, just like we did, we'll supply those arguments, tack O the parameter as you saw. Let's fire it up. Let's let it rip here. Okay. Signing, downloading. Ooh, all the files that we saw here. Do we have anything now in a current directory? Let me take a look. No, uh, I don't see anything. Okay, I guess there was nothing on those shares, at least in the everyone section, presumably, right? Did we actually have access to secrets? No, not really. If I actually look back through the output, the enumerated shares that we saw just previously, the only ones that were readable was everyone and IPC dollar sign, which wasn't all that interesting for us. Secret we don't have access to, and these were the only readable shares. So nothing found. All right, well, hey, these are all good things to do on our checklist. Maybe we could see if there are other users that we might be able to at least figure you're out with the guest access that we presumably have, right? Let me use tac tac users. Trying this just on the FS01 or the file server. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get anything out. It's probably worthwhile to pass this on all of the hosts in the environment, see if it pulls anything else that maybe that server on its own wouldn't give us. That doesn't seem to be doing much. Uh, hey, let's go ahead and close that out and try it across all of the endpoints. Slash 24 for that CIDR notation. And I'm not thinking... I'm not positive we'll get anything with this either. We can see from the green plus sign, we do at least have some credentialed session or access, right? Just like we saw to be able to pull those shares down, but that's not working too well on all of the other hosts. Well, okay, let's try another approach. Let's kind of go back to what we were thinking earlier with those null sessions, but now let's look for users rather than shares. So I'm still gonna be passing tack tack users. Let me fire this up, see if we get anything. Pulling it down, ooh. Oh, okay. There are a decent amount of hits. Everything coming through here. Presumably a first name and then last initial as sort of the setup and structure. What do we have? Let me zoom out just a smidge. Looks like we can see Elizabeth, Isabella, Liam, Noah, Theodore. What else was there? Oh, hey, John H. There's me. <laughs> and a password, presumably just in the description field of the user that's displayed here as uh, the full name and everything given. So John Hammond, password, please subscribe. Nice, cutesy, I appreciate that, M Alpha. <laughs> that will give us some credentialed access and we have a domain user that we could use. So now my mind goes straight to using Bloodhound and we've showcased Bloodhound on this channel before. Hey, another video if you're curious about it, but it is awesome and incredible at kind of mapping out the whole Active Directory environment. Before we fire up Bloodhound though, I do kind of want to validate those credentials. Hey, can if I use that on all the other hosts, if I supply John H now as our user with the password, please subscribe, PLZ subscribe. Will that actually get access? Will I be able to see that as a login that works here? Oh, it works on ADCS, DC01, FS01. Okay. Yeah. And some of these others. So maybe it's working. Well, look, let me say this is only testing access via SMB, the server message block that credentials are valid across each of the hosts, but that does not mean it might allow remote login or any other kinds of access. This is strictly SMB protocol. Now let's go ahead and get Bloodhound staged. I have all these commands that will end up staging Docker, Docker Compose. Again, remember the new latest Bloodhound community edition is phenomenal in that it only takes 
one Docker command, like Docker Compose Up, to spin up everything that you need to run Bloodhound. No more messing with the Neo4j database or any of the other dependencies, it's just install, good to go. We can cruise through all of this, looks like it is gonna spin up all of the database, graph, everything that we might need, and then I could go ahead and determine what is the default admin password that's set just by looking in the logs. Since I am using Docker Compose, I can just check the logs for that instance, and I can just simply grep for the password. If there's a line that displays that there, yeah, okay. Initial password is set to all of that nonsense. Looking good. Let me fire up my web browser, Firefox, so I can interact with that user interface with Bloodhound. In my address bar, I'll go to localhost, or 127001 as the IP address, and port 8080 is where we should be for Bloodhound. So login credentials should just be admin, I believe, uh, and I'll paste in the password. Let me see if this will get spun up. Oh, it looks like that did log in, but it does need a new password to be created and set for that account. Uh, since this is just a little learning environment, I'll use some stupid, simple, fancy pass, and now I should be able to reset my password and log in. And here we are, Bloodhound Community Edition. Now we can try to collect everything that we might need from that Active Directory environment. And NetExec makes this super easy. If we really wanna work in that environment though, we should probably set up some DNS capabilities. So we can use like the host names and the fully qualified domain names for all the hosts in the environment. Hey, if you're following along within the name your price training and lab environment, you do not need to do this step to set up DNS. This is the usual process if you need to do this through a VPN or in the real world, but it'll actually mess up the Active Directory domain in these cloud virtual machines. So skip this if you're following along with me. So honestly, let me just try to end map at this. Let me use that TAC PN to ignore, hey, just pings that don't come through. And then let's specify that port 53 for DNS. And I wanna look through the entire subnet and then only look for what's open here. So this should tell me what machine is acting as the DNS server. In this case, it's 10.10.10.10. I don't know, was that our domain controller or one of them? It doesn't matter. We can just slap it into our configuration. We can validate that that is what it should be if I use that as my domain server with the dig command, just to do some simple, hey, DNS lookups. So I think we were looking at like netexec.local as our domain, right? Does that anything, does that come through? Oh no, no, I got that wrong. It's netexec.lab, looking like that. There we go, 10.10.10.10, sweet. That should be the domain controller or DNS at the very least. And we can set that up in our own etc. hosts or etc. resolve files. If you wanted to validate that even further, you could do the same thing with like DC01. Okay, yeah, that is in fact the domain controller. Same thing with FS01 or any of the other servers that we were looking at. We can see that one is .20 for our file server as we saw just previously. So let's edit our etc. resolve.conf. We'll use nano for that. And let me change the name server to just 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10. And I know that's not ideal. There are some better ways to set up our DNS resolver to use the NetExec lab or the environment that we're up against, but this will work just fine. If we want to make sure that this new DNS configuration is working, we could try to use this with like LDAP or anything else. Hey, let me move out of my Bloodhound directory. Let me get back to NetExec and we can use NXZ LDAP as one of the protocols. We can test this against just that domain controller with the user John H that we know the credential for, tag P, please sub, close that single quote, and we should still see this authenticate just fine. Yep, looking good. The reason that I use LDAP here is because that will rely on a lot of the domain and DNS settings being actually functioning and working. So at least this is an indicator, we're good to go. Quick reminder, this is not necessary and you should not do this if you're using the Name Your Price training lab environment and those provided cloud virtual machines. And now we can just use Net exec to cruise through using our bloodhound collector. And this is super duper cool. Say we just run the exact same command that we did, but let me use tac tac bloodhound and then we'll add the collection method that we want or what we'll all end up pulling back. I will use tac tac collection and all as the keyword there. Now this should just rip, and go through everything that we need. Oh, that's so cool. That is so sweet. <laughs> There we go. It spits out this zip file and that would contain everything that we might need 
Granted, it's in another directory, so let me go validate and make sure that is still there. Good. But this is everything that Bloodhound would need to be able to work and interact with that environment and map it all out for us. So let's get back over to Bloodhound and let's try to upload some data. If you have some files available from Sharphound or Azure Collectors or NXC doing it for us, we can just go to the file ingest page and begin uploading some files. There's a button here, my face might be in the way, but I'll click on that and then we'll go supply our file. I can paste in that location here and oh, that must be valid JSON. Do do I need to extract all that? Let's do that super quick. Oh, you know what? We already have a whole lot of these JSON files, so I think we can just supply all these to work with, right? Let me try to upload those one more time. I'll just get to the netexec folder and then select all of the JSON files and click open and upload. Okay, super easy. Now we're looking good. Let me be sure to click upload and then, yep, just confirmation. We will upload one more time and that will be processed. Looking good. Now I want to hop over to that explorer tab and this will take a little bit for Bloodhound to ingest and process all that data. But hey, once it's done, we can get back into action. Oh, looking good. It's just like it completed. Okay, so let me hop over to the explorer tab and now we should be able to search for or do whatever we want all across Bloodhound. If I were to search for things like the domain computers, you can see it tries to uh, autofill or suggest some options here. If I wanted to drill down into those domain computers, taking a look at these, we can see all the members of that might be interesting for us. Here, I'll move my face out of the way, expand the members. Now we can see all of those servers that we just knew we're up against with across the domain. And those are some simple options, but we could do a whole lot more for anything that we wanted to search for, you know, just regular Bloodhound usage. But if I went to Cypher, I did want to try to maybe do a custom search to look for Kerberosable users. We could do any search that we wanted to with some of that Cypher syntax, but in the folder icon, there's a whole lot of other options here. Here are some of the pre-built searches that we can use. And if I scroll down, we might be able to go find some of those Kerberosable users where we can just easily determine their credentials and get some access. Let me go ahead and click search with that being staged. And look, we got a whole lot of stuff here. I just got to drag, move a little bit. There is one user. So maybe not a whole lot of results, but hey, one worthwhile hit. And that is some new access that we don't already have. Oh, wait, I'm just zoomed in a whole lot. There's also the Kerberos ticket granting ticket, TGT. Okay. So SQL service though is worthwhile. I want to dig into that. Thankfully, Bloodhound did all the hard work for us. It was able to track this down. So at least knowing that there are some Kerberosable users, we can go back to the command line and use netexec to automatically Kerberos these. Let me make a file for kerberos.txt and that'll just include the usernames here, SQL service and krbtgt. There we go. Now, can I use my netexec command as I have just previously? And then can I go ahead and actually specify I want to now Kerberos and we'll supply and pass in that kerberos.txt file that I just put together. Now, when I hit enter on this, let's see what it digs up. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot here. It was able to go ahead and pull this out, get the ticket granting ticket hash stuff that we need for our SQL service account. So let me copy this and let's create a new file for it and try to crack that hash. Let me just say uh, for John dot text and then we can slap all that syntax in looking good. Now let's use John the Ripper or maybe Hashcat or whatever we want to try to rip that apart. I do want to install sec lists, by the way, because I don't think that's common in Kali or at least built in a natural by default, but that'll have some really good word lists that we could use to rip through this in a dictionary brute force attack, right? Okay, that is installed. And now I should be able to just run John the Ripper and I'll specify the format here just to be explicit. That should be a Kerberos 5 TGS. Uh, and I'll specify my word list to be what? User share. I think it's in sec lists there. Yeah. Passwords, common credentials, tab completing here. I want to use the 10K most common credentials and I'll pass in my for john.txt file, which includes the hash that I want to crack. So I'll hit enter on this and okay, it like immediately tracks down, let me in with a one for the I. So that's nice and clever. And that should be the password for our SQL service. Now this is where we can do some really cool stuff because NetExec has the capability to work with MSSQL, a lot of those Microsoft SQL databases. I could just simply use NXE and I'll use the new protocol MSSQL where I get to specify the database server. And that is dot uh, 30 in this case, we could use our DNS and dig to be able to track that down, but we'll specify 
our SQL service user with TechU and the password for let me in with a one rather than an I. I'll hit enter on this, validate that works, and you can see, there it is. We've got our green uh, little plus sign and we are logging in A-OK -okay with that access. Now at this point, because we have credentials to the database, we could just interact with it. We could just log in and we can make that really easy with Impacket, right? They have an MSSQL client and we'll need to use the domain and everything set up here. So netexec lab forward slash, oh, sorry, dot lab, specifying the user as a domain user and its password specified by a colon there. Let me in with a one all at the SQL server 10.10.10.30. Because we are using Kerberos and we were able to crack that Kerberos in Info and Kerber roasting here, we will use Windows Auth, tack Windows Auth to be able to perform that login. So fingers crossed. Okay, yeah, we are in. We've logged into the Microsoft SQL Server and now we could do whatever we'd like. Uh, we could run help if we were looking around and say, hey, what do we do here? But enumdb to enumerate databases is probably a worthwhile thing for us just looking around and seeing what's available. Looks like there are a couple different databases. Master, TempDB, Model, MSDB. A lot of those look kind of default, except for users. I'm especially interested in that users database. Let me go ahead and use the users database. I'll supply a semicolon there. And now we've changed the database to that. Now I want to know what tables are present there. So I'll use select name from sys.tables. And again, the closing semicolon that should fill us in. Ooh, okay. We have just Credentials. That sounds pretty interesting and worthwhile. Let me select star or select all from that credentials table. Again, semicolon to end it. And there we go. Seemingly, we have a username and password pairing. More credentials that we didn't have access to before. Benjamin M and their password provided here. That's probably a password that we could use to gain further access, but we should validate that with NetExec. So let's exit out of our SQL server and let's try to use NetExec with just SMB for our usual login. And maybe we can try to just spray that Benjamin M user with the password that we just saw. I'll paste that in and let's see, will that give us some access? Can I just use this on any of the hosts here? Uh, not cruising through some, but oh, actually is cruising through FS01, plus sign green looking good on there. So that clues us in a little bit, but remember, Bloodhound is our map and compass here. Now that we've got credentials for that Benjamin user, let's go see what they might be able to do or access. If I simply search for my Benjamin account, there he is, looking good. Let me right click him to add to the owned database. Hey, we have stolen, compromised, we've gained access to that account. And if I move my face here, we can get a little bit more information about Ben. We can go see what he might be a member of and some other information that's worthwhile here. But the member of section is super interesting because it looks like there is a group called FS admins. Going to assume that's like file system or file server administrators. We can see the members there and it's just Ben. So, hey, that uh, could be a foot in the door. And maybe we could use that to get access to the secret file share that we saw just previously. Actually drilling down into this. Yeah, take a look. This description here says the members have admin rights to FS01. So that file server, now we could probably compromise that. Let's go back to our command line. Let's go ahead and use nxc for our netexec command one more time. And we can use winrm to try to remotely control or manage that instance. And that file server was what? 10.10.10.20? Yep, I believe that is right. And we'll pass in our username with tag u for Benjamin M. Specify our password. We'll paste that in. And this is something awesome here because we have credential access, because we know that, hey, we're an admin on this. And let me just fire this up just to validate and see. Yep, that is pwned. You can see that little extra point says that is a local admin, which means that we can just run code. We can execute commands. So if I run the same command again, but include a hyphen and a capital X, now I could say, I want you to run any shell command that I provide. Let's check if we are really in fact in the administrators local group just by checking net local group administrators. We know, at least from what netexec has told us, yep, it's definitely in there. Here you can see that group, NetExec FS admins, that Ben is a member of. They are local admins to this server.
And this opens the floodgates, because since they're a local admin, we could dump whatever we want from that machine. Maybe we could get some other sensitive or secret info, like dumping registry hives, SAM databases, all that stuff. So let's run netexec with the SMB protocol, and let me get back to the file server, FS01, with the user Benjamin M, tac P for our password, and now what I want to do is actually pass in tac tac sam to dump the whole SAM data database and grab some local hashes. Let me see if this will work here for us. It is a local admin. It's dumping Sam hashes. Looking good, looking good. And there we go. Hey, we've got the administrator hash. We've got a guest hash. What else do we have here? Default account, WDAG utility account. Okay, and that's about it. Maybe nothing super duper interesting because we already have admin access. But that goes to show all the things that we could do with this local admin access and NetExec helping make our lives easier. We could just as well check out some of the logged on users. I believe there's a hyphen there between users and logged on. Let me see if that gets any results for us. Yeah, okay. Ooh, interesting. A John A user is currently logged in from the login server of DC01 or the domain controller. We haven't dug into that user yet, but we can get back to Bloodhound and take a look at what that John A user is. Yeah. If I go take a look, ooh, he's got the diamond, diamond hands. That is a domain admin. If I actually scrolled back down, you can see member of here and take a look. Yep, domain admins and administrators across the whole domain. John A is our target account to fully own this Active Directory environment. And they're logged in to the file server that we have admin access to. Now here is where some other really sweet magic of NetExec comes into play. Because we could, rather than dumping the SAM databases or checking out logged on users, we could literally impersonate one of those logged on users with some scheduled tasks. So, hey, let me remove that TAC TAC logged on users segment. Let me use that TAC capital M for SCH tasks as, and we'll supply that TAC O to offer some other options or arguments. We can set the user to equal that John A account. And then I can go ahead and specify a command that I want to run. Like simple, who am I? I don't know, just to validate, just to see, are we who we think we are running as the John admin user? Let me hit enter on this and see if it can just schedule something to run right now and get the results back. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay. We are already have access as a domain admin. We've done nothing other than Bloodhound and NetExec. Now at this point, we can just get a reverse shell. We can get like a command and control, maybe our C2 framework callback, get an agent, implant, beacon, daemon, whatever you want on the domain admin account with the domain controller access, right? So let's try to do that. Let me just spin up super easy, super simple. Hey, let me fire up a meterpreter command. But because we have just code execution as that user, we should be able to run whatever we want. There we go. We'll spit it together, that little payload executable file. Let me fire up MSF console to get the uh, Metasploit framework up and running. And again, hey, you could use Sliver. You could use Havoc. You could use whatever you want here. But keeping this easy, keeping this simple, for the sake of showcase, let me go ahead and use a multi-handler for forward slash there to separate those. We'll set our payload to the X64 meterpreter reverse TCP, the same thing that we just built out with MSF Venom. L host can be really anything. Hey, just listen everywhere. We'll set our exit on session to be false. And then we can simply run this and wait to catch the capability. While that is ready and waiting, let me create another terminal where I'll go ahead and just spin up a little Python HTTP server. How about that? Uh, that'll listen and share that payload in a public space where we could force the end user, the John A domain admin, to pull that down and execute it, giving us the reverse shell. So let me move up to the very top here and we're going to use NetExec with the SMB protocol onto the file server, FS01, with the user, Benjamin M, as that compromised account, passing in the password. I have that stored here that I can just go slap in. And we know we can use that module with scheduled tasks to run as another user, in this case, our John admin account. And the command can be, hey, maybe a PowerShell cradle. Maybe 
maybe we'll use PowerShell to invoke web request. And I'll wrap that in double quotes here as we're building out that string. Specify the location. Our IP address was what? 10.9.254, whatever? Yeah, way back at the very beginning, I think we were 254.6. And that's port 8000, as we can see from our Python HTTP server. And we want to download the payload.exe. We'll go ahead and put that into the C Windows tasks or whatever directory you want. I don't know, temp, anything. And once we have that staged, downloaded and set there, we'll use a semicolon to start a new command and then go ahead and invoke the exact payload file that we just downloaded into C Windows tasks, payload.exe. Fingers crossed. If I'm crossing my fingers here, make sure we actually end our double quotes. Uh, do we, yeah, we don't need that. Uh, surrounding payload.exe. We need that across the entire PowerShell command. I think, I think we're looking good to have our domain admin user logged into the file server, pull back from our temporary HTTP server to get our meterpreter callback and give us a shell. Fingers crossed. Running it, running it. Yep, saw the download, looking good. Will it work? Yes, meterpreter session one open. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I really just love the fact that, hey, we've got all that capability with NetExec. And back over on the Metasploit framework, back in our MSF console, if I take a look at the sessions, list them all out with tag L, there we can see Meterpreter running on Windows for our NetExec John A or admin user at the file system server, and that's okay. But look, we could pivot from there because we're the domain admin. Let me see if I can interact with that. Sessions tag I1, there we go. Uh, I could, if I wanted to, get UID, but we know who we are. Could I get system being a domain admin? I don't see why not. Now I am, of course, NT Authority system, and I could do anything, 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 bring myself over to the domain controller, and then wreak havoc, do whatever. I own the whole domain. And hey, we got to do it all with NetExec. I think it's pretty sweet. I think it is another Swiss army knife for network exploitation services and protocols that are out oftentimes in an environment. And look, because it's got SMB, like WinRM, MSSQL, SSH, FTP, LDAP, so much cool stuff, even RDP, the remote desktop protocol. There is so much you can do with NetExec. So I hope you incorporate it maybe into a bit of your operations, your campaigns, your penetration tests. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.